And good afternoon, and welcome back to the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. Michael Brown alongside my partner, Andre Anderson. And we are all set for the final match of the second day of the Tom Bickey tournament. This is a highly anticipated match between two of the top teams in the country. In white out there, we see the number one team in the country, the Monroe College Mustangs. And in the dark color, that is one of the top teams in Maryland, Juco the Harford Fighting Owls. So, Andre, we are anticipating a very intense match today. Yes, we are. It's gonna be high intensity, a lot of running, you know, a lot of uh, solid tackles. But I can't wait for this game, and I can't wait to see really how you know Monroe does after their um, championship run last year, how they can come out and how they can play. They are the defending national champions. Um, and uh, let's go down the uh, the starters for both teams. Um, for Monroe, number two, Manuel Cordero. Number three, Hugo Dickinson. Number six, Diego Bastos. Number eight, Tiago Jose da Silva. Number nine, Tao Torgaman. Number ten, Felipe Aruda, number 12, Riku Yamasaki, number 14, Tasai Tita, uh, number 77, Rodrigo Bachi, Piera, Miera Aruda, and number 99, Alejandro Silvestrini. Silvestrini. Easy for you to say. Starting for Hartford, uh, number one, Jake Van Voorhees, he's their keeper. Number two, Kean Poocher. Number five, Jude Hill. Number nine, Mi Mikel Inesta. Number 10, Kojo Gakio. Number 11, Rex Pierce. Number 12, Jadel Thomas. Number 16, Nicholas Gall. Number 18, Dominic Peters. Number 23, Jaden Clark Leva. And finally, number 24, Andreas Montoya. Head coach for Monroe is Marcus D. Bernardo. He's in his 15th season. He's a two-time national championship winner. And he has a career record of 167, 33, and 14. Uh, his assistants are Jonathan Avila, Felipe Kula, Massimo Gariulo, and Jay Myers. Head coach for Hartford is Bill Wardle. He took over the program in 2020. Prior to uh, taking over the program, he was the top assistant for Hartford. His assistants are David Orth and Luca Farina. So we are just about set to go. Um, Monroe comes into this one with a early season record of 2-0. And, uh, and uh, they, they won both games on a recent trip to South Carolina. Hartford comes in with a record of 1-0-1. They opened their season with a tie at Anne Arundel and then they beat Carroll 3-2. So we want to remind you that this is the, uh, the Tom Bickey tournament. Tomorrow is the penultimate day of the tournament. The final match of the tournament will be a highly anticipated 2 o'clock match where the Montgomery College Raptors men's team will take on this very same Monroe team. And uh, they met twice last year. Andre, tell us about those. Yeah, so two times last year. The first time was in uh, this Tom Bickey tournament that you guys are seeing right now. It was an eight to one uh, win by Monroe. Now, that's obviously a very big uh, deficit. But towards the end of the season, MC uh, started to pick it up, and they did end up making it to the district finals, where they faced Monroe once again. And MC did end up winning that game four to one um, to make it to the national uh, tournament. And that was actually Monroe's only loss all season last year. So what an incredible win for MC. And um, it's looking like this is turning into a rivalry between the two teams. That is for sure. Um, I mean, MC was already big rivals with Harford, who was uh, 
we see right here in the, uh, on the screen, but uh, Monroe is uh, coming up on the outside, as they say in horse racing, and, uh, and they look like they could be a, uh, a big rival for the Raptors. They sure do. I mean, they're going to be the team that everyone wants to face, everyone wants to beat, so today will definitely be a, uh, a test for them, and then tomorrow will be the big one. So we shall see. Again, they are the number one team in the country. They won the national championship last year. Now you might wonder, well, how did they get into the national championships if the Raptors beat them in the districts? Well, the answer is that um, a certain amount of teams get into the finals field, the national championship field, by way of a bye. And it depends on the ranking, uh, the final ranking in the uh, top 20. And Hartford starting an quick. attack, uh, an aggressive attack right off the bat. <laughs> um, but uh, so even though uh, Montgomery College knocked off Monroe in the district finals, because Monroe was number one at the time of the, of the Raptors win, uh, they, they dropped to number three after the loss, but that still qualified them for the tournament as a, on a bye. So that's how they ended up in the tournament, and they subsequently ended up winning the national championship. Yeah, it's going to look like they're going to continue to do what they do, and that's play you know, beautiful soccer, move the ball around, possess it, and um, hopefully you know, win games along the way. Well, like uh, Andre said early on, um, uh, the Raptors' loss, uh, their loss to the Raptors last year was their only loss of the season. They finished the regular season um, with a record of 14-1-3. Hartford last year was 13-5 overall. They were 10-1 in Maryland Juco. Um, they beat Montgomery College in the regular season last year, but MC bounced back to beat them in the regional finals to uh, advance to the uh, to the districts, and uh, the winning goal in that one was scored by um, Raptors great Andres Jabot, who is now playing at St. Bonaventure. Correct, uh, Andre? Yes, that is a, that is where he is right now. I mean, I played here in 2013. I've been a part of this program since then. Um, I've seen a lot of players, you know, come and go, but. I can say Andres is definitely one of the best players um, to come through Montgomery College and honestly to play in the JUCO, or the JUCO um, NJCAA. So it was a privilege to, you know, watch him play last year. Well, he's a, he really was a fun player to watch. And um, it's no surprise at all that he has uh, gone on to a, a, a NCAA Division One. Uh, soccer program. Well, yeah. He scored in his first match. And in his second match as well. Two goals in two games. I mean, if you've seen Andres play, you you know that something like this would come right away um, from a player of his, uh, you know, status. So, it's incredible. Alright, so, we're in the early going. Again, um, Monroe in the white with the orange, orange sort of yellow stripes. Um, and uh, Harford in the dark colored uniforms. <laughs> Two Division I powers going at it. And here, here comes, ooh, big collision. Early on, a yellow card. Oh, that's something that you never want as a player, especially as a midfield, uh, like a defensive midfield or even a defender, is an early yellow card because then that changes the way that you're going to play. You know the rest of the game. You can't play as physical because you know that any tackle that can be of a yellow card source can get you another yellow, which then would give you a red card and you'd be out the game. And then you can't play the next game. Exactly. So it's critical that. <laughs> Players, you know, you play tough, but you don't want to get that early yellow 
um, to potentially, you know, change the way you play throughout the rest of the game. And define what, um, define what you, what s signifies a yellow? Um, I mean, <laughs> I, as a player, you know, you say some of the tackles that maybe you'd make that you'd get yellow wouldn't be one, but anything from behind is definitely going to be yellow. Anything from, you know, I guess like the side, like a slide tackle from the side would also Line be one. Blind side tackle. Yeah. Um, pulling the jersey, especially like an excessive pull of the jersey, um, would be a yellow. Now, tackles from behind can also be red cards, and that's usually where they lead from. It's like, you know, elbows and things like that. But <laughs> slide tackles from behind usually lead to red cards, so you want to refrain from doing that. And it's, it, it's a safety thing. It is. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what it is at the end of the day. It's not just saying, like, hey, like, you know, you're making a bad tackle. Oh, what a – oh! oh what an opportunity. Is that a PK or is that a goal kick? Oh, wow. Goal kick. That's number 29. Gun Ha Lee for... Uh, and just a goal kick. Great opportunity there. He let that one slide away. That was a great goal kick by the keeper. And here they come again. Yeah, Monroe's midfield is very solid. Good ball once again. Both of these teams have very deep benches. From the looks of it, Monroe has a quite a bit deeper bench, actually. It's like about six subs for Harford and maybe 10 for Monroe. I wouldn't say it's too hard for Monroe to recruit players. Uh, <laughs> being a powerhouse that they are, they probably have many players sending in their, you know, their highlight tape to a school like that. And they are, they are you know, it's no secret amongst uh, those in the soccer community. They are very well funded. Yeah, many scholarships, many international players. And, you know, a lot of you may be thinking, well, athletes get scholarships all the time. Well, at the two-year level, scholarships are not nearly as plentiful oh, as they are at the four-year level. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, Division One, I, I think... Um, NJCAA Division One might be the only division where scholarships can be it given is. out. It is, yeah. You okay. can you can give some help at, at D two level, and but not like D one. Yeah. And um, at D three, you can uh, there's essentially no financial assistance for the athletes. Yeah. And of course, uh, when you played for Montgomery College, it, it was a D three program. Yeah, it was. We were a Division three program. Um, we were playing a lot of, you know, Division two and Division three teams. And so, won. yeah, and we won. We made it all the way to number three in the nation, actually, um, the year that I played in 2013. So we were a very good team um, with no scholarships. It was just one of those things where we had a lot of players um, in that group that all played either four year and came back or just played at a high level. Um, you know, youth level or maybe back in their country. So we had a very special year. I remember that team very well. That was a lot of fun to watch that group. <clears throat> and of course, your coach then is the coach here now, Pedro Braz. Yes, he is. He's a great coach, University of New Hampshire alum, played for his country of Angola as well. Very experienced uh, player and a very experienced coach as well. So, um, you know, these MC players are learning from one of the best uh, coaches out there. He's on his uh, second stint here at Montgomery College. He um, coached here for uh, four years, then he went on to Gallaudet um, University where he was the head coach. And then three years ago, he came back to Montgomery College and uh, tomorrow, he will be going for his uh, 97th career win. 
at Montgomery College. It's amazing. 100 games almost. Almost. He's going to have it before the end of September, that's for sure. For sure. Good ball once again. Another great attack by Monroe. And good job there by the defense, but that'll set up a corner. So far, it's been pretty much all Monroe. And they have a lot of playmakers out of the middle of that field. Um, Aruda, number 10, has been kind of controlling the game for them. The ball's been finding his feet. He's been turning. Not been showing crazy athleticism by, you know, making long, uh, quick runs down the field. But what he has been doing is every time that he gets the ball, finding these little, oh, an attempted bicycle kick. Might have kicked someone in the head, but yeah, it seems okay. Yeah, I think okay. he did. Got him in the jaw, it looks like. Hopefully he is all right. Yeah, he seems to be okay. It's a warm afternoon here. I did not receive notice whether or not they're going to be uh, the uh, referees are going to be mandating water breaks, but I would assume that they are. Yeah, and I'm assuming the players would hope that's the case as well. I would be yeah. hoping for one. Yeah. Uh, and again, that's, you know, people say, well, they never stop soccer games, which is pretty much true. But this is a safety uh, measure. Nobody wants uh, an athlete to get dehydrated, for example. So they're going to err on the side of caution, and I'm all for it. We're here to number six, Diogo Bastos. He gets it to Cordero. So they're setting up for another attack. Good movement. Monroe's really patient on the ball, as, as you're seeing here. I mean, they they're not forcing the ball forward they don't mind swinging it back and forth uh you know a player will play it to uh, what a ball over the top oh good defensive stop but yeah a player will play it to someone and that same person that they pass to will give it right back they do not mind the tiki taka type of style um that a lot of the european teams play so they're looking very good no, they, their passes are very sure there's a long one. Oh. oh and that oh <laughs> Foul or offsides, it looks like. Yep. Offsides. And number nine there, Tao Torgeman. And uh, uh, Hartford Keepers already had a workout. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a leg. Yeah, he is a really good kick. And it looks effortless as well when he kicks it. But here it goes an attack for Hartford. That was a great ball by the, uh, the keeper on the goal kick. But the uh, Monroe defense gets it right back. They're Rick, cool, calm, and collected on the ball. Yeah, they, their passing is very sharp. There's a good looking ball. Up, oh, taken away there by number 11 for Hartford, Rex Pierce. Let's see if Hartford can do something with it while they have. That's a good ball right there. Got a bit of a run going. Uh oh. It's a good attack right here. Yeah, Switch. Good attack. Good one-time switch. Oh, this is an opportunity. Looking for his left foot. Good shot. Oh, Good nice save. shot. Good save there by the keeper. Alejandro Silvestrini. In goal. The ball on the left-hand side. Have the Monroe team shift towards that side. And then quickly get the ball, find the center midfielder, switch it. While the whole team from uh, Monroe is on the other side of the field. That's when you can have the one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Here's a run down the side. Looking for a cross, nothing really there. But they're patient. They look very patient to me, uh, Andre. They do. 
taking their time, making the short pass. They just want to keep it. Yeah. That's what it seems like. I mean, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Possession. Good cross. Oh, Ooh. beautiful. Wow. Oh, that was a that was a gorgeous attempt. Torgerman comes up just short. And once again, the Harford keeper is really working hard. That's uh, Jake Van Voorhees. He's a fresh, or, no, yes, he's a freshman keeper. So he is uh, getting quite an indoctrina indoctrination to, uh, to college uh, soccer. <laughs> Yeah, what a game to play as a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But hey, you can handle this. You can handle anything. Absolutely. It's a great test. Another good ball. Battle for it. Very impressed with Monroe. So, well, well, both teams. Yeah. But Monroe has definitely dominated possession. Yeah, they just, it's looking like, hey, as long as we have it, the other team doesn't. Exactly. And they've had several good opportunities. They, they could easily have at least two goals. Good ball again. Runs it down. Now he looks patiently. This is Aruda. Gets it to Bastos. Cadero. Wow. Yeah, this is uh, this is some excellent play here. And that goes out. So be a throw in for quick throw in for Monroe. They seem to keep the ball on this left hand side a lot though. I've yes. been noticing. Yes. As I said, yeah, most of the action hand. most of their attacks have come from the left as they face the goal. They're patient. They don't mind re setting up again. A lot of teams get in a hurry when they get uh, close to the 18. Yeah. Possible nerves or, you know. Anxious. The, yeah, the over idea. anxious. Exactly. Yeah. Idea of just like, we want to score a goal. It's like, of course you do. But it's like, can you get the best opportunity to score that goal is the question. Right. work hard to get the ball down there and then you want to take care of it in hopes of getting your best uh, look and that really appears to be a big part of the Monroe strategy See, some guys would have taken a shot there mm -hmm. I would have <laughs> <laughs> Good block shot. Once again, the game is going to be reset. Hartford's whole team is in their half defending. Yeah, there is nobody back. Yeah, they've got they've got ten players on defense right now. So they are packing that end, doing a lot of chasing too, aren't they, Andre? They are. And I mean, that gets fatiguing. It does, it does, especially, it's a beautiful day, but you know, it's a little bit warm. So a day like this, um, it can get tiring, frustrating, but hey, it scores still 0-0, so they're doing their job. <laughs> they're definitely doing their job, but they're, fi they're facing a very patient, um, Monroe team. They don't appear to be in a hurry. Plenty of time, obviously. No wild shots. Ooh, beautiful. 
But again, Hartford's defense doing a good job against a, a really relentless attack oh, here. Oh, offside. So they had it set up, but <laughs> an offside. So that will send the ball the other way. I mean, these are opportunities right here that Hartford can take advantage of with these long goal kicks. Um, if their midfield and their attack step up, maybe get a flick on a header, and that could put someone behind the defense. And also, with them defending so much in their own half, um, those goal kicks are going to be able to send the ball into their attacking half. And then the best bet would be for them to keep it there. Here they go down the side again. Right here goes Monroe once again. Wow, good defense. Corner kick. Yep. And let's see who's gonna take it for Monroe. Number six, Diogo Bastos. He's a sophomore defender. Left footed. Beautiful. Ooh. Boy, I have it served up there right, in, right on the doorstep. But they retain possession. And the ball in. Great and header. There's oh. A, oh, wow, what a stop. Offsides, but what a save. What a header. And wow. what, a, what a stop by Voorhees, Van Voorhees. Gorgeous. Was all for naught, but still fun to look at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's still going to make the save. <laughs> He doesn't know it's offsides. He's exactly. got to play it. Exactly. Offsides do get missed as well. Not everyone gets caught. We're halfway through the first half and we are still scoreless. Once again, we're going to see this. Oh, here comes an attack. But the defense, is just, they just take it away. Yeah, they swarm like bees, you know, they all... Da Silva, the, one of the co-captains, just took that ball right away for Monroe. They're obviously a very well-coached team. Yeah, structured, they defend well, they move the ball well as a unit. This is exactly the kind of team that uh, Tom Bickey, the, the Montgomery College icon who this tournament is named after, would appreciate. He would, uh, he would have loved this kind of play. Tom Bickey, the longtime head coach here at Montgomery College for soccer, started the program here. And when he retired, he had 471 career wins, the most at that time of any coach in the history of the NJCAA. That is incredible. It is. That is. And even now, almost 20 years after he retired, he's still in the top 10. So That's amazing. Very, very impressive. Tom, Tom Bickey was just a great guy and a wonderful, wonderful coach. Helped out many, many of the players. He really cared about student athletes. Why did he let her run? They just patiently knock it back to the keeper who's going to set up their next attack. I don't know about you, Andre, but I, you, you, you kind of feel like Monroe is getting ready to score. Yeah. I, you know, they've, they've had several great opportunities, have yet to convert. Yeah, they're... There's a... Up, oh, Voorhees again, Van Voorhees. Got his hands on it. Oof. Another shot, another save. I mean, they're just... They're possessing the ball. They're moving as a unit. You know, Hartford is having to defend all in their own half. It's going to get to a point where, you know, maybe 
they bend and don't break, which they're hoping, but it's hard to do this for a full 90 minutes. It sure is, because they really, they've had a couple of opportunities, but for the most part, Harford has spent the, the majority of the game defending. And as you uh, pointed out, a 10-man defense. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, as they call it, park the bus. And it looks like there's gonna be a water break. Yeah, they're, uh, they're gonna give them a water break uh, with 21 minutes uh, to go in the first half. So, while we have this opportunity, I do wanna remind folks, uh, if again uh, that obviously this uh, the the Tom Bickey tournament is being streamed live, um, and uh, it is also going to be available uh, in case you missed any of the games or in case you want to see a game over again uh, for a second time or a third time or a tenth time, uh, you can visit mctv.info. Go to the program schedule, and there you'll see the programming for Comcast channels 998 or 10, Verizon channel 10, and RCN channels 1059 or 10. So, a lot of numbers there, but basically, remember 10, and you're going to be good. <laughs> no matter what system you're on in Montgomery County. And lucky number 10. If you don't live in Montgomery County, and you'd like to see the matches again, uh, any of the matches from this tournament, um, you can go to the Montgomery College Raptors YouTube channel. So just go to YouTube, type in Montgomery College Raptors, and there you'll see a huge list of games um, with thumbnails. And uh, these games will be there as well as games from past seasons um, and other sports as well, not just soccer. So it's a, great, uh, it's a great way to catch up on what's been happening with Montgomery College Athletics. So again, that's uh, the Montgomery College Raptors YouTube channel, as well as MCTV. So you got lots of opportunities to see these games uh, from the Tom Bickey Tournament plus past years of the Tom Dickey Tournament as well. So. Yeah. yeah. And also don't forget to follow MCTV um, on social, MCTV social on all social media platforms. And so the address is MCTV social. Yes. Correct? Social, yep. All right, here comes another attack by... Good cross, that good cross. Beauty. And Harford gets it out of there. Good defense. Got a couple of new players in. That's uh, Markako for uh, for Monroe. Monroe again with a very Good deep. Ball. Oh, there's a there's a there's an opportunity. He's looking for the cross. And there and it he is. It. There it is. Ooh. There's the first goal of the game. That's by number four, Shotaro Kino. What a strike. And the patience of his teammate to wait for the cross. Because yeah. he could have taken that shot. Yeah, yeah. But hey, I mean, if no one's there, why cross it, right? Exactly. Or he could have tried a shot himself with a with a difficult angle. Yeah, but he was like, I'm gonna look for what's working, I'm gonna look for who's open, and that's exactly what happened. And he just buried it. I mean, there was, uh, there was absolutely nothing that uh, Jake Van Voorhees could do about that one. No, I mean, no. Yeah, as good as he is, that's... No, he, he's played very, very well, but come on. I mean, he's not Superman. Yeah. Mom and Dad might think so. <laughs> Yeah, they probably do. They should. So anyway, with 20 minutes to go in the first half, um, Monroe jumps on top 1-0. Oh, 
Now here's a chance for Monroe, or for uh, Harper, excuse me. They could try to service into the box. I mean, I don't think they've had, they had one chance uh, on target, but- Yes, they did. This so, could be another one. Let's see what they do here. I think he's going, I think he's going to try to serve something inside the 18. That's my yeah, guess. That'd be the best opportunity. Instead of trying some kind of long shot, which you do see made. Yeah. We saw one made uh, yesterday from that distance, but no, not much happened on that one. Not quite sure what the game plan was there. Yeah. He might not be taking that again. Yeah. But, I don't know, maybe that was a set play? I don't know. It's possible. <laughs> anyway, we are in the first half of the final game of day two of the Tom Dickey tournament. And again, um, tomorrow at two o'clock, We'll have the final game of the tournament, and it'll be the host, the Montgomery College Raptors, taking on this very same Monroe team, the number one team in the country. Highly anticipated match between two excellent and deep teams. Yeah, I know MC's been waiting for this. I mean, it's game by game. You know, you never want to look at the next game, but now that they're here, I know that they can't wait for that one. Oh, yeah. All right, that's going to set up a corner. And this time it's going to be uh, Tayega Matoba with the corner. There it is. Nothing doing there. However, they retain possession with a nice header. Tioga. And he knocked it out, I believe. Maybe not. No. Nope. Another Big, corner. Another corner. There is a nice breeze today. That does help the athletes. And it's not enough to really affect play. Yeah, so those are always the best type of breeze, you know. Because when it's too windy, kick the ball into the air, and then the ball just kind of does its own thing. Right, it gets knocked down. Yes, I've, I've, I've covered games where the wind was a real negative factor. Wow, yeah, a bunch that of corners. goes out again. I'm going to have a third corner. That'll be on the far side from us. We are in the press box here at the beautiful Montgomery College soccer facility on the Rockville campus. And it's a real privilege to be here and to be covering this tournament from this beautiful facility that was just finished a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, I never had the uh, opportunity to play at the current stadium. Um, as when I played here, it was a lot different, but it's beautiful just for the players and you know nowadays to have this. So it sure is. All right, now we get a corner, uh, a goal kick for uh, for Hartford. Gonna be a long goal kick. He's gonna look for someone to flick it on. That's what they tried to do. That was their thought. It's headers all around. And Monroe's gonna just swing it around. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that. Uh, Flying the ointment there. 
Uh, got a whistle. And it's foul against Harford. Good look at number 21, Florentino Moriah. 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Great ball over the top to a cross and, and Voorhees, uh, Van Voorhees is there to smother it. He's played very well. Yes, they're trailing, but there was no way he was stopping that goal. Yeah, no, it could be a lot more goals on Monroe's end if, uh, if the keeper has been playing as well as he has. Yeah, he's been very, very on point. Monroe's made a lot of subs um, as you're looking at the their team right now, but they're still moving very well. They're still playing like, you know, this is the first team. So a lot of chemistry on this team. Yeah, they're a very deep team. And a very experienced team as I look at their roster. It's uh, it, it, just glancing through the roster. They're, they're almost evenly split between sophomores and freshmen. A good balance of leadership and a good balance of, you know, fresh new players. Um, that's always good. I mean, you want to have some freshmen on your team so that they're going to be able to move into that sophomore period where then they're helping the newcomers, you know? Yep. But then you also want some sophomores that are players from uh, a year before that had the experience and know what they're doing, know what the coaches like, know what the coaches want so that they, they can set the standard um, for the team. Exactly. That, and the experience, of course, is just irreplaceable particularly for a team like this that went all the way and won the national championship. Yeah, it's, you know, you, you play in your stadium and you play in other teams' stadiums all year long. But when you get to that national tournament, and uh, last year it was in Melbourne, Florida, I think this year it's in, um, I don't know, I think maybe somewhere in the Midwest. But regardless, when you get there, it's a whole other ball game. And your eyes open up. You see the other teams that made it. Everyone ranked, for the most part, you know, in the top 20 in the nation it's a it's it can be intimidating so to be that you know good as Monroe is to win the national tournament um, they have a little bit of swagger with them to understand what it takes Van Voorhees, Van Voorhees has quite the leg yeah he is covering a lot of ground with those kicks that's a big advantage some NFL teams might be looking for him. That has happened many times. Everybody kicks soccer style now in the NFL. Yeah. I don't think there's anybody kicking straight on anymore. Oh, no, not at all. Not for a long time. When I was growing up, that was, <laughs> that was the way people kicked, straight on. I can't remember the last straight-on kicker in the NFL that I that I saw. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I mean, kicking a soccer ball straight on like that with your toe, yeah. you can easily break your toe. So kicking a football, oh, man, I couldn't imagine. Now, a lot of those guys had a shoe that had a flat front on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They had a special kicking shoe. They were allowed to wear those. That just shows you the age difference. Of course, the uh, the commanders uh, had a very famous kicker who kicked straight on. His name was Mark Mosley. And I'm being told he may have been the last straight on kicker in the NFL. I have an expert <laughs> sitting next to me. Dan Rankin. Or as we like to call him, Dreamy Dan Rankin. Dan is a uh, producer director for Montgomery College. Um, he is one of the, the nicest, most accomplished guys you'll ever want to meet. But he is dreamy.
He's protesting. You can't hear him, folks, but he's protesting. He's very modest. Anyway, 10 minutes to go in the, fir in the first half. The final game of day two of the Montgomery College Tom Dickey Soccer Tournament. <clears throat> Coming to you from the gorgeous soccer facility right in the heart of the Rockville campus. It is pretty much the envy of the state of Maryland in terms of soccer facilities. It's beautiful. Definitely beautiful. I mean, I, I will say um, 2013 I was here. It was a grass field. Yes. Oh, just wide. Um, yeah, so it was a grass field. But when I say grass, I'm being very... Uh, generous. Yeah, generous is probably the right word. It was a um, maybe a dirt field. Um, and then part of the baseball diamond was also in the field. But for us, it didn't matter. You know, we love to play. Um, we still knocked the ball around. We did our thing, but... You know, 10 years later, I'm here working back at the college and I get to experience and walk on the field that uh, the players have now. And do I sometimes get sad? Maybe. Do I sometimes wish I had a year of eligibility left? Maybe. <laughs> but, you know, you can never be, you know, upset for other people's uh, uh, what, what others have. And especially being an MC alum and, you know, being part of the MC family, I'm just happy someone in my family could experience something like this. So uh, this is a really good step in the athletic uh, direction for the, the school. That is for sure. And it, it sort of coincided with uh, the college's uh, decision to go from D uh, Division three to Division one. Mm. Makes um, sense. And of course, this facility uh, instantly became uh, a great recru recruiting tool uh, for both uh, the men's and women's soccer coaches. Yeah, I can see that. Because all of a sudden you have a, a beautiful facility to show off. Uh, press box, turf field, nice. Here's an opportunity. Wow, what a play. They were just knocking the ball around, tiki taka, <laughs> flicking it on. It was looking amazing before the offsides. This team is solid. So, um, yeah, it's a great recruiting tool. It's got, uh, you know, as I said, the turf field. It's got lights. They can play at night, which I know is a special treat for players. Uh, great locker room facilities with uh, uh, home and visiting locker rooms. Uh, training room, concession stand, uh, it's just its just the, the whole nine, and uh, the college did a great job with it. So, I have to say that Monroe has definitely dominated the half. Yeah. But they're only up 1-0, so it is obviously anybody's match. Got a lot of time left. Here comes another opportunity, but Van Borges is there again. And I think, boy, foul. Monroe was really looking for a foul there, but they didn't get it. Their uh, striker thought he was tripped, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the, you know, you never call a foul on yourself, so <laughs> you always think the other uh, opponent did something. <laughs> and I know that uh, sometimes soccer players have been accused of acting. <laughs> you know, or let's put it this way, emoting, over-emoting. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> Andre was co-captain of uh, the Raptors team in 2013, the team that went to uh, the national championships. He was a defender. And I remember him well, an excellent player. We are fortunate to have him in the booth with us today, and MCTV is fortunate to have him on staff. So here they come again. 
Five minutes to go in the half. And it's, it's, it's I wouldn't call it methodical, but it's, it's precise. Yeah. Five minutes, five minutes. Pinpoint. Yeah. They know exactly what they want. They know exactly, you know, where they want to move the ball. Look at those runs. I mean, yeah. the runs are. They've had all. Oh, wow. Oof, that was a dangerous ball. But Harford's defense has been stout, except for the one shot. And Van Voorhees has been a rock back there in front of the net. Oh, yeah. he's He's been the difference maker as a goalie. Absolutely. There's a shot. Oh, cross. Didn't find a foot. And one thing that I really like what Monroe does is that when they do play that through ball from the midfield, maybe to these wingers on the left or the right-hand side, a lot of times what you're seeing is that these wingers are running to uh, the end line to where the goal is. But instead of crossing these balls in the air, they're really trying to bring them back um, on the ground to like the six yard box to the penalty spot. So that is an easy just one touch, you know, basically tap into the goal. And that's more so of like the newer style nowadays. The ball is really staying on the ground rather than going into the air. And um, they're doing it exactly how you'd want to do it. So. <laughs> They're hitting on all cylinders right now. Yeah, their their wingers are very unselfish. Very. And patient. I'm impressed by that. Because a lot of times those wingers will try to force things. Yeah, I mean you always want to get that crossing in the air, but you're seeing right here again the ball's here getting played out wide. Let's see what happens. He's gonna want to take them on. Yeah. It's on the ground. And if anything, they hold on to it. They're not afraid to go back. And they're not afraid to bring it back out and set it back up again. They have a lot of patience. Again, this is uh, indicative of excellent coaching, I would say. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Good play. They just want to keep it. That's all they want to do. Here we go again. There's a shot. Didn't have enough on it, and it was floating. But again, Van Voorhees is there. Defense, wow, okay. But here we go. I mean, this is a chance for Hartford to really do something. They're finally in the Monroe half. Two minutes to go in the half. <laughs> but just like that, Monroe takes it right back. They're going to take their time. They're going to knock it around. They're in no hurry. Zaruda. Kino, who had the, uh, the one goal of the game, number four. There's a nice looking ball down the corner. Taken away by Harford, knocked out. Took it away from Matoba. So they come right back out and patiently minute, set it up. Just under a minute left in the half. Just going to be very patient. Look for an opening. Harford gets it back. But they're going to kick it right back. There's a goal kick. Talk about a great leg. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was some nice set. Uh, wow. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> the composure is insane. 15 seconds. And they're going to be content 
it looks like to go to the locker room with that one goal lead. Uh, one last rush. And there's a boy, they they had an opportunity. One. Wow. So it is. That is the end of the first half of our final game of uh, the second day of the Tom Bickey uh, tournament here at Montgomery College in Rockville. And uh, after 45 minutes of play, the, Mon the Monroe College Mustangs are on top of Hartford, 1-0. We'll be back with the second half in just a few minutes.
and good afternoon and welcome back. We are here for the second half of the final game of day two of the Tom Bickey tournament. Michael Brown alongside my partner, Andre Anderson. And at the half, as you can see, the Monroe College Mustangs, the number one team in NJCAA Division I, leading the Harford uh, Community College Fighting Owls from right here in Harford, Maryland, 1-0. The only uh, goal scored by in the match so far was by number four, uh, Shintaro Kino of um, Monroe. So, uh, Andre, give us uh, your impressions of the first half. Um, well, Hartford did a very good job defending. They are losing 1-0, but defensively as a unit, they've been doing well because Monroe has been playing outstanding. I mean, the possession that they've had on the ball, the patience, uh, the collective... Uh, unit they've been playing as has been incredible and um, this second half it's seeming like it's going to go the same way they they uh, we were both so impressed why by, by their technical abilities their footwork their passing yeah. their patience um, they're obviously a very well coached team and that is taking nothing away from Hartford Harford has played very well. They've they played have. hard. They have. But let's face it, 90% of the first half was played in the um, in the Mustangs offensive end. Yeah, but, I mean, it was halftime. I'm pretty sure, you know, the coach has seen some things, maybe a couple weaknesses, a couple areas where they can attack. Um, Harford could to Monroe. So maybe the second half, Harford does come out and say, hey, you know, let's maybe push up a little bit let's press them a little bit and give them less time on the ball which could lead them to making mistakes so i do think the harford can come out in the second half and and make a statement harford i thought did play a rather conservative first half they did they were often as you pointed out they had 10 guys back on defense yeah i mean they rather it seems like they rather lose by one or two then try to score and lose by nine or ten but at the end of the day i do think they have quality players in their team as we've seen throughout the first half so i think it's time for them to you know possess the ball a bit themselves and uh try to take this game on yeah let's see if they can take some some of the attack to uh to monroe here in the second half so we're uh, all set to get underway Second half kickoff, 45 minutes of action to go. Again, this is the final game of day two of the Tom Bickey tournament. And then tomorrow at two o'clock, we have the tournament final. And that's another highly anticipated match between these very same Monroe Mustangs. Uh, they'll be taking on the host of the tournament, the Montgomery College men's soccer team. Yeah, so we're underway. Good ball. There's a beautiful ball. There's a and shot strike. opportunity, but it's wide. Wow, just like that. Right out the gates. And that was, uh, he had a lot on that kick. Just wide. That was number 17, Matoba. Jake Van Voorhees uh, is the keeper, and he is back out there again for the second half. Played an excellent first half. Did allow the one goal, but uh, through no fault of his own. It was just, it was just excellent execution by Monroe. Yeah, I mean, he was out there saving a lot of shots and difficult ones as well. They weren't all just straight to his hand, so. Um, he has to be impressed, and his team have to be honestly thanking him as well for um, a lot of the great saves that he's uh, helped them with. And that'll go out, and that'll be a throw in for and number 77, Aruda. There's two Arudas on this team. I'm not sure if they are related. And here comes the... Uh, the patience again. And they don't seem to get phased when the defender gets close to them. It honestly seems like that's kind of what they want. Draw someone in. Right. The, the sooner, you know, the closer they get, then they can just slip a pass off and just beat the defender that way rather than having to, like, run past them and waste a lot of energy. And you can see how patient they are. 
right here. This is an excellent example of it. They don't mind setting back up again. Yeah, you can't lose if uh, the other team doesn't have the ball, so. And that seems to be a bit, there's an opportunity. But uh, defense is there for Harford. So Monroe College, they are from the Bronx, New York. And they are the defending national champions. Head coach is uh, Marcus Di Bernardo. His assistants are Jonathan Avila, Philip Kula, Massimo Garulio, and Jay Myers. Head coach for And Arthur. they're on attack. And nothing doing. Head coach for uh, Hartford is Bill Wardle. His assistants are David Orth and Luca Farina. I would say in the first half, you could probably count Hartford shots on one hand. Yeah, they had, uh, I believe, one solid one. Uh, but other than that, I mean, three, maybe four. Um, but hey, I mean, all you need is one of those in the back of the net, and the score would be tied one to one, so. Good defense there, but that's going to set up a corner. Yeah, any opportunity that Hartford gets next, they need to put it away. Play there by De Souza, De Lima Souza, for uh, Harford, and let's see who's going to take the corner for number six, and that is Diago Bastos. He has taken the majority of their corners today. Left-footed player. Here it comes, and it skips wide. Skipped off somebody's ball head. In. That's a goal. Oh, Ooh, there's. Oh wow. my goodness, Great that looked save. like a goal. But again, Van Voorhees was right there. He was ready. Yeah, that was a good play. I should have saw that coming rather than saying it's going to be a goal. I should have been like, "Whoa, Van Voorhees in the goal. He's gonna. Of course, he's gonna save it." Well, it sure looked like it was going to be yeah. a goal. We've seen many of the goal that looked like that over the years. That was set up just like that. It had 2 nil written all over it. Back to the keeper and Back reset. Back to the keeper, reset. Keeper has not been too busy. Their keeper in the second half is Alvaro Ramos, number 13. Yamasaki was the uh, keeper in the first half for um, Monroe, and he had uh, he had time to. Really uh, work on his suntan back there. <laughs> but hey, I mean, as a goalie, if you get no action in the game, you are not mad about that. No, you're not complaining. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Sit back there, possibly get a clean sheet, not have to do too much. That sounds like a great day. Offsides that time on, uh, on Monroe. They've got a lot of new faces out there in the second half. We'll try to pick up as many of them as we can. Tiago Silva is out there, number eight. Number seven, Yamamoto, who played quite a bit in the first half. He's out there, excellent midfielder. There's a battle. He 
you know, the other thing I don't see a lot out of them are really crazy long passes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it is seeming like their number one, uh, you know, key, their number one goal is to hold on to the ball. Obviously, it's to score goals. But if they have a ball, like I said before, if you have the ball and the other team doesn't, you can't lose. All you can do at least is tie. So it's like, why not possess the ball as much as possible, wait for the right time and opportunity to go forward, and then take a chance there. Yeah, it's a very measured approach. Um, and, uh, you know, the proof's in the pudding. This is a very successful program. Had the same coach for 15 years. I believe you said he coached the men and women's team. He did. And, um, and I want to get this wrong, but in 2018, uh, because of a unexpected vacancy in the women's program, Ian, uh, Marcus Di Bernardo ended, ended up coaching both the men's and the women's team that year, which is, I don't know how he did that. Let alone, the women's team went undefeated and won the national championship, and the men's team went all the way to nationals, but lost in the semifinals. That's so, incredible. That's a pretty decent year, I'd say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know there was a situation here in Montgomery College uh, last year where um, an unexpected, or a year before yeah, last, where ago, an yeah. un unexpected vacancy came up in the women's program, and Pedro Braz and his team had to coach both. Mm -hmm. They did. They were very successful as well. That was two years ago. So it's, it's not unprecedented. However, those kinds of results are, are pretty special. We're 10 minutes into the second half and uh, score remains one nil. And the style of play has not been altered for uh, really for either team. Seeing a little more of an aggressive offense out of, uh, out of Harford, but hasn't, uh, hasn't paid any dividends yet. Yeah, no, Monroe's still holding on to the ball, still being very patient. Making the good passes. This is a great, great ball. Uh, here comes an opportunity. There's a cross, a little high. Pretty tough to do anything with that one. There's a race for the ball. The ball's went out of bounds. Good hustle there by uh, number seven, Delima Sousa for Harford, but he couldn't catch up to it. No problem, just holding on. Once again, Harford has all 10 players back on defense. Deep, very deep. Yeah, they're playing almost like a 5-4-1 formation in their own, I wouldn't even say half, I would call it like their own, you know, almost third. Almost third, yeah. That is a shot, but not, not close. Jake Van Voorhees has been a real bulwark for uh, Harford in this game. Offside call. Ball back to Monroe. Harford just not able to get anything really going on the offensive end. The, the uh, Monroe defense has really not been tested. Not Other too much. A couple of shots. Yeah. And the goal kick opportunities when, you know, the long goal kicks come in, they have won some headers, but nothing too, uh, <clears throat> too much for them today. No, not yet. But again, we have lots of time left. Yeah, a lot of time. And it's only 1-0, so. And yes, and it can, as we, we know, uh, 
you know, it can change in a split second. Things happen very quickly in soccer. Here we go again, the winger. Oh, pretty pass oh, and a goal. Wow. Pretty pass. Oh, wow. That was a gorgeous goal. Number 29 with the assist. And number nine, Tal Torgeman with the goal. One of the first times we actually seen um, Monroe kind of cross the ball in the air and not too much of like a, a cutback pass. Right. And it worked. Gun Ha Lee with a beautiful cross. And uh, Tal Torgeman took it out of the air and put it in the back of the net. So that's a two nil lead now. And the way this is going, Harper better get moving. Yeah. They're going to need to There's a pick kick it to up. space, but nobody there. Yeah, they're going to have to start mounting some attacks here. That was just a beautiful play, and we've been seeing that all afternoon long. All afternoon. The ball is finding the middle of the park. Uh, and then the center midfielders have just been slipping in these wingers and there's seeming to be a lot of space as they're able to, you know, take on the defender one-on-one. -on -one. As you've seen right here, no way. Oh. Keeping, keeping in mind that, that Hartford has all 10 players back on defense. They do. And deep. They do. And it, it's not phasing Monroe too much. I mean. No. The it's, the, it's the passing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've got a corner situation. Bastos again is going to take it. They have definitely, I don't think Harford's had a corner the entire game. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they have. Yeah, I don't think so. And um, been numerous corners now for Monroe. There's a, not a real good shot there. Oh, all right, here's an opportunity of foul. That's going to be a foul on Hartford, I believe. From behind, down is number 14, Ida. Tasai Ida. Monroe with a very international squad players from all over the world, as the same can be said for Montgomery College as well as Hartford. There's a beautiful ball. They try to head it out of there, but it's still in there. Finally got it cleared, but, oh, bad touch. Oh, he kicked it out of bounds. He did not want to do that, number 17, Matoba. That's the, a rare, I guess you could call that a mistake. Very rare. And the way they played today. Just under 30 minutes to go in the match, and uh, Monroe up two. Good ball. Uh oh. Uh, Van Voorhees made a gutsy move and almost left that goal wide open. Let's put it this way, he did leave it wide open. It's just that the ball got out of bounds before uh, the Monroe player could get to it. Otherwise, it'd be 3 0. Oh, wow. Get it back to Hartford's half and let them try to get the ball out from there. Yes. So be a throw in for Harford. And here Harford has something going, perhaps, but you now we got a battle for it here in the corner. 
Harford guy holding on there for dear life. And Composer once again. And it's going to be a goal kick. Yep. Goal kick coming up for, uh, and then not even their goal kicks are uh, are big. <laughs> yeah, they, they just want to keep it. <laughs> Everything in moderation. Yeah, they just want to possess the ball. It's all that matters to them, and that's that's honestly all that should. Well, with a two nil lead. Uh, it's smart strategy, uh, but basically that's what they've done the entire match. They're yeah. just a patient team. They expect to have opportunities, and their patience is paying off because they've had quite a few. Yeah. The vast majority of the action has taken place in their offensive end. Very unselfish team. They're just as happy with the four foot pass as they are a 30 foot pass. And they call it offsides. Monroe did not agree, but nevertheless, up oh, here's an opportunity. Very brief, very brief. Clock is just relentless. They will be stopping for a water break, I assume. They did in the first half. Yeah, so pretty sure it will happen once again. Oh, here's an opportunity. Van Voorhees came out. And it's going to be kicked out by Hartford, so it'll be a throw in by Monroe, Aruba. Cordero, beautiful pass. Oh, wow. Oh, what a, what oh. a give and go. And he, Cordero thought he was fouled. He wanted the call. He thought he was fouled in the box. There's a shot, it's off the mark. Cordero is pleading his case and he better not plead it too vociferously or he's gonna get a card. <laughs> You know, that's actually a new rule um, nowadays in the EPO. It's that um, English Premier League, um, top division in England, and I'm assuming and some of the other leagues in Europe as well, it's that if you get fouled, or say you get tackled, and the ref doesn't call a foul, and you plead your case at all, you're going to get a yellow card. Yeah, they've been doing that uh, as of recent, and a lot of players have been getting yellow cards just for saying, hey, ref, that's a foul. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's helping um, with players to not, you know, argue with the ref. And, uh, but still, it's a little bit, um, a little different. Yeah. Imagine if they did that in the NBA. Oh, man. <laughs> Everyone would be thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> but I had read about that. I had read that that was a new trend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, soccer sometimes gets a little bit of a, an unfair shake they you know they talk about players complaining too much and acting and 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 things like that um but that's pretty strict yeah it is and i mean you have to think about it as well it's like imagine you play basketball for instance and someone steps on your foot if you don't roll your ankle or anything and you just get your foot step on it doesn't maybe hurt as much as for instance you're playing soccer and someone steps on your foot and the players are all wearing cleats with studs on the bottom. Right. So even like a little like subtle, you know, foot stomping, or I wouldn't say stomp, but like a subtle like foot step on, it hurts. Yeah. And yeah. the boots aren't made from, you know, these like more sturdy material like you see in football or um, in <laughs> basketball. They're like more of these plastic or, you know, kangaroo leather type of boots. Ah. So they're really thin. Ah, yeah. So if you get stepped on at all, it's really painful. So sometimes it looks like, oh, he just got bumped or he just got nicked. Why is he holding his foot? It's like, right. well, it hurts. Yeah. 
I mean, if it hurts, it hurts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then don't get me started when it rains, you know, in, in the European leagues. It's raining a lot, especially in England. They wear metal studs on the bottom. Oh, wow. So, so imagine if you get stepped on, oh, you're really going to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. So it hurts. Smart play. We'll just start over. They'll just start over, and they're more than happy to do that. Their their patience is apparently endless. They finally out wide here on this right hand side. Um, they're attacking right hand side. They've been on that left a lot. Again, the patience. Instead of trying to force something, they just take it back out and set it up again from up top. Good tackle. That was a very good tackle. But he couldn't come up with it. And that sets up another opportunity. Now, if you're on Harford and you're being played like this, mm -hmm. does it get frustrating? Oh, oh there's a shot. It's so across. frustrating. You know. I, I, I'm sensing that a little bit. Oh, that was just over the top of the crossbar. Looks like they're going to be taking their water break here. Um, and that was uh, number eight. Uh, da Silva, Tiago Da Silva with the shot, just missing the third goal of the game. Yeah, but, you know, it's definitely frustrating. I mean, as a player, you know, you don't – your plan isn't to come out to play a game, and especially you're traveling, and especially like this is a tournament and it's a holiday weekend, you're excited to not have to touch the ball game, you know, or to defend all game. Or to chase all game. Yeah, exactly. And then it's a little bit warm and you're running and, you know, you people in the stands, your family, your friends are watching and all you're doing is just running back and forth. So it's definitely frustrating. Um, but sometimes that's just, you know, it's just what it is. And you have to find ways. Like, just because that's the case doesn't mean, you know what? Our fate is to lose this or our fate is to just to give up. No. Your competitors and their athletes, I mean, you need to find ways, however it is, um, to, you know, move up the field and score some goals. So as frustrating as it is, I know they're still trying to find a way to put the ball in the back of the net. Absolutely. Their problem is they just can't seem to. They're having trouble gaining possession. And when they do gain possession, they're having trouble maintaining it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Monroe, they're surrounding them like bees, you know. It's that, like, press after you lose the ball type of game style. So you have the ball, okay, good. But as soon as they lose it, a lot of times you see uh, players, and this is in all sports, they, you know, shake their head or they put their hands in the air or they start to complain um, at their teammates. Um, but this Monroe team, as soon as they lose it, the whole team just chases the ball down. Get it right back. Okay, we have it all back. Right. And let's let's go. start again. Yeah, let's, let's go start again. again. So that's that collective mindset. Probably starts from the coach. And says, hey, when you lose the ball, win it back. Why, what are you complaining for? There's no point. Win the ball back, you'll get it back, and then it'll just be like you never lost it. So, Again, we want to remind you, uh, this is our final game of Saturday. Uh, on Saturday here at the Tom Bickey Tournament, coming to you from the Montgomery College uh, Rockville campus. We have one more match uh, in the tournament. That will be tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon right here at uh, the same spot, Rockfield Campus of Montgomery College, the beautiful soccer complex here. And there you see it right there. Tomorrow at 2, the Montgomery College Raptors will take on these Monroe College Mustangs, the number one team in the country. And uh, we're all looking forward to that match. But we've got plenty of time to go in this one, just over 21 minutes. And 
It's 2-0 right now, Mon uh, Mon uh, Monroe on top. Wasting no time. Wasting no time. They're on the attack again. A little different look. And what's the call? Monroe ball. Monroe ball. And I can see some subs out there for uh, Monroe. Number 20, Makako is out there. I believe that might be his first action of the day. Number 21, Florentino Mariah is out there. And off they go again. Monroe with an incredibly deep bench. Might be the deepest bench I've seen at this level. Yeah, they have two teams basically. But that's what you need though, and that's what you want. You want to be able to have enough players to rotate, you know, switch. Hopefully no one ever gets hurt, but if someone does, you know, you have someone that can just oh, fill in the... an opportunity. Oh, just got away, but that should be, that's going to be a goal kick. It's going to be a goal kick. Thought we might have another corner, but it went off of Monroe. just has not been able to get anything going. Correct me if, if I'm wrong, Andre, if they had a shot on goal this half. Oh, this half? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't believe so either. The ball has barely been in their offensive end. Yeah, I think it's time for them to maybe push up a little bit or even so. I mean, we know that Monroe wants to hold on to the ball. They're very comfortable um, holding the ball in the back. But it might be time for some of the Monroe uh, forwards to kind of press them and, and make them a little bit uncomfortable rather than allowing them to just swing it back and forth. Here comes an opportunity. Patience. Oh, wow. Goal. And there's the goal. by number 99, Alejandro Silvestrini. They had an opportunity right there, under it, right in front of the goal. It was just, and the, again, the short passes, they found Silvestrini and he put it in. Composure, that's really what's being the difference today. They don't, it doesn't matter how many defenders are on their back, next to them, in front of them. They just take their time, move it, get down the field, and they score. So we have an athlete down for, for uh, down for Harford.
contender for Hartford. He's getting up, which is an excellent sign. But he is getting up, leaving the field with, uh, with some difficulty. So hopefully he's all right. Walking gingerly. Could be an ankle. Which is a, unfortunately a very common injury uh, in the sport, correct, Andre? Ankles? Yeah, ankles and knees. I mean, we're using them to, you know, play the game. So it's definitely the things that kind of get hurt the most. One thing we have not seen tested today, particularly, is the defense of Monroe. Yeah. They just, they really have had the afternoon off. Yeah. They've been, they've been part of the offense. Yeah, yeah, they've been starting the break for the for Monroe the whole entire game. But, I mean, it keeps going back to that possession aspect. It's like, if the other team doesn't have the ball, then they can't attack the Monroe defense, you know? So that's why they just hold it. Especially now, I mean, they're up 3-0. to zero. Time is, uh, uh -oh. there's another opportunity. Oh. Oh, we almost had a rebound there. We do. And, and there's another goal. Another one. Oh. So that goal is by oh, yeah. number seven, uh, Yamamoto. And again, just patience in front of the net. Take their time, set it up. No panic. No rush. I mean, there hasn't been, besides the two wingers, uh, the left wing and the right wing, they haven't been running too much either. No, the, the wingers have done a lot of running. Yeah. But which the, is, it's, it's, the rest no. of the guys, have, they really haven't. No. Short passes, just. It sounds weird to say for a soccer match, but it's the truth. Yeah. Comes the substitution in, number uh, 22, Aiden Tross. It's his first action of the day. So there's uh, just under 17 minutes to go, and Monroe with a comfortable lead now. Going to take a minor miracle. That'll be a throw-in for Hartford, and this is uh, this is their deepest penetration in the second half. Yeah, this might be their best opportunity so far. Can they hold on? Mm -hmm. And they lose it, just like that. I guarantee Monroe might dribble it to the left here. Here it comes. Wouldn't be look for a cross. Oh, wow. oh, got a trip. No call, which is a bit, well, you, they call it a foul. Is he getting a yellow card? And a yellow card. So a yellow card on Monroe. They've changed the rules on that, right, Andre? Uh, or have they? Did the yellow card rule? Yes. Um, well, I do not think they have changed the rule, but basically, so say you get a yellow card today, and then um, you get a yellow card in the next game. I'm not sure about the college level, but um, I know in the pro level, you get the accumulation, I think it's like five or six yellow cards, then you're gonna miss a game. Um, I know if you get two yellow cards in one game, then yeah, then you're out that game as well. You're out of that game and you're out of the next game. I think it's you're just out of the game. Oh, you're just out of that game. I think so. <laughs> I know red cards, uh, at least in the, at the pro level, depending on how bad the tackle was, things like that, the the league can determine. All right, is it just a one game suspension or it could be all the way up to three? I got gotcha. you. Um, but the yellow card rule is still, you know. 
But they don't have to come out now, right? No, 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 right. no, no. That you don't have to come out. And the ref isn't looking to give out yellow cards at all. So I mean, you can still foul players a couple times, um, you know, two, three times, and not get a yellow card. But I mean, if you're, you know, five, four, or five tackles in a row that are even soft tackles, eventually the ref will say, "Hey, look, you've been fouling people too many times. One more, I'll give you a card." <laughs> um, slide tackle from the side, like I was saying earlier, behind, high kick, things like that. If it's not too malicious, I mean, you'll get a yellow, but, you know, you can't be throwing elbows to the head and slide tackling from behind. Things like that will get you a red. And a red gets you an ejection <laughs> as yeah, well. Yeah, you're straight away, you're out the game. And then your coach will not be happy with you. No. <laughs> not at all. No. And you don't get to play the next game. No. So it's a, it's a real, it's a real negative. Yeah. It could have really serious consequences. Well, Van Voorhees has had a, a rough second half, but again, I'm not sure. You know, the blame is shared, shall we say. <laughs> yeah, it, it it's wouldn't It's never be just the keeper's fault. No. He's been, even with the four-goal deficit, he's had himself. He's had himself, a, I think, a, a very solid game. He has, because it could be a lot worse. Made some great plays in the first half, <laughs> in particular. So, but right now Monroe enjoying a, a very comfortable 4 nil lead. The clock is on their side. They are in no hurry now. Yeah, they're just going to knock it around. They're going to take their time. Going to work clock. <laughs> Harford would love to get on the board. If nothing else, then a moral victory. A dangerous kick there. Again, the patience, just not rushing it. Okay, let me chip it to you. All right, I'll chip it back. All right, let's let the keeper set it up. You can't miss the keeper on the Mustangs team. That is quite a, a uniform. <laughs> yeah, well, you could be spotted from outer space with that. Uh... <laughs> 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 that uniform. It's all the way down to the cleats. <laughs> yeah, they're just, uh, they're working clock now, I think, more than anything. <laughs> Mr. Trose has other things in mind and offsides. Offside. Yep. That, was, that would have been pretty, but they were offsides. He has a cannon of a kick. <laughs> he really does. He. He almost outkicks his coverage. Yeah. <laughs> he really has a leg. And as opposed to some keepers, he's he's not punting it. He is he is kicking it off the ground. Uh, oh. oh wow! Oh, oh just wide. Wow. Oh, he'd like to have that one back. Yamamoto almost had his second uh, goal of the game. I'm sure he's thinking I should have had it. And after that, seems like his day is done. Yep, off he comes. Here comes another fresh wave of troops. Yeah, it looks like a bunch of the, the last bit of the starters that um, started the game are now out. So they're probably getting them ready and rested for the game tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got faces in there and numbers that we have not seen. <laughs> we'll be.
be I'll be interested to see how, how this unit plays versus you know the starters. I would assume we're going to see much the same. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Sometimes when when subs do come in, they get a little eager to show what they can do. But oh, there's a great shot wide of the mark. He had a lot on it. Was it deflected? That's what it's seeming like because they're not seeming to be running back. So it looks like it might be a corner. It might be. Yeah, yep, it's it going to be a corner. Oh. So it was deflected. So Mariah is going to take the, uh, the corner. He's right footed. He goes long. Harford gets it out of there, but there's the back line again. And there's a chance if they can keep it in bounds, but they have just had no opportunities here in the second half. Very, very few in the first half. Um, but again, they are playing the number one team in the country. So. Yeah. so you can't necessarily, you know, knock them for not having too much possession or not scoring. But I do know that when I was a player, I don't care who I'm facing. To me, it's another game. You know, you're not better than me as a competitor. You're like, you think you're better always than your opponent, so they got to uh, try their best to get a goal here before the end of the game. Foul on the play. <laughs> Rex Pierce was fouled. So here comes the kick. Let's see what they've got in, in store. Monroe has everyone back as they definitely want to keep the clean sheet. Yeah. You know, no goal scored on yeah. them. Yeah, they have, they're, they're all back there. Pretty good battle. And then think decent I saw, attempt. That was a good shot. Yeah, I think I saw like three bicycle kick attempts <laughs> <laughs> all in one <laughs> uh, free kick. Yeah, that was crazy. Which is, uh, that's a tough one. Oh, yeah, it might be the toughest. I wouldn't give it a try. Land on my back, I might not get up. No, I know. <laughs> I don't know how those guys do it. <laughs> but again, these soccer players, in my opinion, are among the, maybe the most superbly conditioned athletes. Uh, it's just... You know, it, the sport does not stop. Save for an injury or on a day like this, a, a water timeout. Yeah, you have to be ready at all moments. Constant motion. motion. There's the defense. Just find the open space, fill in the gaps, and pass the ball there. It's, it's, you know, teams like this make it really simple. Um, but I can guarantee you it's not. All sides again. Yep. And we're down to um, just, just over five minutes to go in the match. And it looks like... Monroe will improve now to 3-0 on the year. And Harford will fall to 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Unless something ultra dramatic happens in the next five minutes. And the way this game has gone, I don't see that happening. I think I'm pretty safe in predicting I don't see it happening. 
That's knocked out. That'll set up a corner. Harford has not had a corner in this entire match. That's unusual, isn't it, Andre? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got to get some shots off on target for the most part, unless you shoot it and then, or whatever, pass it, kick it, and it deflects off a defender. But for the most part, unless you're taking shots with the goalie to have to save it behind the net, you know, um, you're not going to have any corners. And there hasn't been that many shots today, so it's not surprising. No, they, they have, I would, we do not have the official stats here, but I'm guessing they are under five on shots on goal. That's what I'm thinking as well. I remember two in the first half for sure, maybe three, and and just one so far in the second half, mm -hmm. right? Just a just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, they've had that one really good one in the first half. Yes, they did. They had sort of two close together, and then uh, within a minute or two so of each other. But since then, it's been all quiet on the offensive front for uh, Harford. As, um, I think there's only one starter out there right now for, and I'm not sure he started. No, he did not start. So they they don't have any starters out there. I'm talking about Monroe. So they should be, they should have plenty in the tank for tomorrow's match. Mm -hmm. Yep, I mean that shows you as well that they're uh, they're taking out players early, you know, their starters. Instead of getting them more, you know, game time and and more reps, they're saying, you know what, we're playing MC tomorrow, and we know it's not going to be easy. We need to rest our players for that big game. Now it'll be an intense match tomorrow. We are really looking forward to it. But from what I'm seeing here today, MC is going to have their hands full. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one, but the last team to beat Monroe was Montgomery College. There you go. So they know that as well. Second-year players, they're not going to come in here scared at all. No. And there are plenty of players on the Monroe squad who were on that team last year that did lose to the Raptors yep. in the in the districts. So. Yeah. You know, their coach is going to be telling them, the other players that played them last year, this was the team that beat us. We can't come in here thinking that they're just like any other team we've played. Um, so it's going to be a hard-fought one. So we're down under two minutes now. Handball. They didn't call it. They missed it. Again, sometimes I wonder how just one official can possibly stay on top of everything out there. Yeah, it's tough. It has got to be tough. There's so much going on. Yeah. You've got to find the right spots, I feel like, you know? you got to, like, kind of be behind the ball a little bit, maybe to the side. I don't know. And then you, you really... You, you focus on, I would assume, focus, you're focusing as an official on the action around the ball. Yeah, that's what, that's what I would assume. I mean, I don't know. I've never uh, I've never done it, but there's just one guy with 22 players and a very large playing surface. Yeah. 120 yard playing surface. Yeah, I I'll just stick to being a player. Yeah. I, <laughs> it seems like too much for me to I, figure I out and then I have to, you know, ref the game, and I'm, uh, no, no, no. I mean, they do have the linesman, which uh, obviously helps with the out-of-bounds calls and the uh, throw-ins, and uh, and they couldn't do it uh, without the linesman for the offsides. Oh, no, it was impossible. Yeah. Yeah, 30 seconds to go in the match. And Monroe has got this one in the bag. And that's 
the match. And Rowe takes it. 4-0 over Harford. And Rowe now moves to 3-0 on the season. Harford drops to 1-1-1. One, one, and one. The four goals in the match uh, for um, Monroe were scored by number four, Shatoro Kino. Um, the second goal of the match was scored by number nine, Tao Torgaman. Third goal by Alejandro Silvestrini. And the final goal of the match by Suno Yamamoto. So, quick thought, uh, Andre, before we say goodbye. Monroe looks solid. They look like they're in mid-season form. Look like they're ready to, you know, defend their, their national title hopes. And, I mean, for Hartford, it's something to build on. It's early in the season still. Uh, they can't be too upset that they lost uh, the way they did to the national champion. So, both teams are looking in a direction to continue moving forward and uh, uh, be ready for about mid-season to that late-season push. And we are looking forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the third and final day of the Tom Bickey Soccer Tournament here on the Montgomery College campus in Rockville. We've got one more match tomorrow, maybe the biggest match of the weekend, tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when the host, Montgomery College Raptors men's team, takes on the team we just watched win 4-0, the number one team in the country, the Monroe College Mustangs. So, don't miss that tomorrow. Again, 2 o'clock right here on the Rockville campus. If you can't be here, check out the stream. And we, uh, we can't wait for soccer tomorrow. We'll see you all then. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, on MCTV.